In today's episode, we look at two women entrepreneurs who are making great strides in the PR and communication industry. We start off in Centurion to visit Lebu Madib, the founder of Rainmakers Communication. She tells us how she made it against all odds to become the PR powerhouse. We then move to Rivonia in Johannesburg, where Allegro Di Quagnani of Ogella Media is based. At such a young age, Allegro is already making her presence felt in the PR and communication space. We find out what a day in her typical life is like. The profile of PR and communications professionals has undergone a significant change from a white male dominated field to a racial transformed female dominated field. The PR industry, I think it's quite cool in terms of um, it, it helps to build uh, good reputations for companies. It also, um, you know, it's, it's good for, to, for making relationships with the business and the community that surrounds it. Okay, what I've seen mostly it's women. I think like women are more into like, you know, the business because, you know, they're more people who are about it about like how their relationship works with people. Once they call the group that seeks connection through the use of social media is millennials. This group needs to be taken into consideration in South Africa by many organizations and brands. As these individuals are characterized by the use of technology to research products and share information about brands. I know it's pretty hard because nowadays you need connections to, to do such things. It's not easy. You have to know people, so I don't think it's much easier for, for, for young people to, to start their PR companies. But I think it's a good opportunity for young people to, to focus and start going on that route of starting PR companies because it helps in terms of growing the country, uh, the, 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 the economy and stuff. You know, people need jobs. Yeah, cool, Siswam. Thank you. Your reputation. Communications management in the PR. Namtanje, we meet two phenomenal women who know all about PR, strategy developments, and saving reputations. Okalawaboy Kamalake Ulebu Matiba, Yenage Oyi founder and company as a PR powerhouse. Yenage she lets us in with business like Uguza Silaziga Bans, Gutlona, Bisebenzangan. I'm Lebu Madiba, owner and managing director of PR Powerhouse. We are a strategic public relations and communications agency. Um, our clients are in the corporate sector. We provide them with strategy, reputation management, media relations, and events. We can be found on our website, which is www.prpowerhouse.co.za. We are on Twitter as at PR Powerhouse. Same on Facebook and on Instagram as PR Powerhouse SA. Ule bu matib. Oh, mu ni ge best mama. But when you show a cool girl, I forget like it. Ule nkunja le na APR no communications. With over ten years experience, a seven zagi ona le nkunja le. One wouldn't expect any lesser. Uma kumi ange business like. I'm good, how are you? I'm uh, Galaxy, I'm All right. Yes, ma'am. I know, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. It's very creative and different from me. I'm very happy. Because we are these kind of people. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. And then what is I do is a lucky business. I'm very happy. Now is the right time. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. The experience and knowing that I can do it differently. Um, I had been doing it for a while, and then it got to a point where I looked at it and I thought, but I can do this myself. Um, there's room for young black people in, in the industry, but there's also room to develop some of our own to come into the industry. So I thought, can I go to yeah. just try this thing and do it myself and see how it goes? Yeah. 
This is the team. Mm -hmm. um, this is um, Palisa, mm -hmm. Lesejo, Lesejo, and then Lu Mohali over there. Mohali, the only male in the office. The only male in the office. I hope I didn't abuse you. Ah, uh, sure. He'll answer, <laughs> He'll He'll answer, answer that one for himself. himself. Yeah, yeah Roma. Um, the adjustment from being Umundu Obesebenza mm. to now being, you know, Umpatu and Kampani, how was that whole uh, transition for Wena? Ibi Lulana. It wasn't, I don't think I was ready. The thing is, when you come from a, from big agencies, because I've worked for big agencies, mm -hmm. you've got an HR department, yeah. you've got a finance department, you've got um, drivers and, and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. When you start your own business, you become all of those things. Yeah. So on top of doing the PR work that you do, mm -hmm. you still have to do those things at work as well and make sure they work. And I'm a mother and I'm married. Yeah. And so, so it again. was, a, yeah, I think I went crazy for about a year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. so, but then as time goes, you learn, you know, to find the right people to help you. So how many in the celebrity team? Five. Five. Yeah. So that will be 21. Mm -hmm. Say 21 cyclists. Mm -hmm. With being small as we are, you're um, ensuring that the media releases are done timely, uh, ensuring that you go to the meetings, follow up with clients. If there's a particular client who's not happy, I have to take the bullets, uh, but you know, protecting the team. So I become that uh, type of an individual who stays on top of uh, what clients need to be ensured. Lebu is a mother, so as a boss, she's always understanding of where I come from. So there's a good balance between family life and work life. What I like about her as a boss is that even though she's very strict, she she's always comes back to say thank you. As PR Powerhouse, our focus is on corporate communications. So we work with the likes of NetBank, um, pharmaceutical companies like Novo Nordisk, um, and a whole lot of other um, corporate type of, of companies. And what we help them do is identify who their target audiences are, what it is that they want to communicate to those target audiences, mm -hmm. how they want to communicate, what messages they want to put across, mm -hmm. and then only we get to the PR part. Novo Nordisk is a digitally PR powerhouse for just under five years, and basically PR powerhouse is supporting Novo Nordisk uh, PR services um, as well as eventing. There's a number of projects that we've worked with them um, within that five-year period, including our very famous diabetes relay, which we have every year in November. Um, so they're basically responsible for coordinating the teams, for putting the event together. And it's quite a big event in that Ribana Lady riders, they're about 16. She not only understands the business, she's got great compassion um, for the client. She, you know, she's flexible. Sisle, mm -hmm. what makes a powerhouse unique? We are not service providers to our clients, we are partners. Um, we know their business, they trust us with their business, which I think is a very important thing. Um, and I think that's what sets us apart. It's that once we are in, we become a partner and we just grow with the client from there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, thanks uh, for spending the time. I'll come around more often than I could pay. Good. And we'll see you in the studio. Eh? All right. Thank, Thank you, you so welcome. much. All right. Bye. Bye bye. What happened the last time you took your eye off the ball with the finances? Ulebu was a little at Ridgeville, it's one. Raised by a single mother and her grandmother, growing up, life wasn't exactly smooth sailing. Siko kisane nabanga nbaki nabanta pa mazika banzi, uguze basche lugu tulebu, yenaga wu intoka zinjani. Yay! <laughs> you know, I don't remember much of my childhood. It's very, it's very strange. I was born in Atridgeville, Pretoria. She was very, 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 very intelligent. I was a genius. I was number one. 
all the time. <laughs> well, growing up, obviously playing, going out. <laughs> we actually learned life together. Till today, there isn't anything that comes up. She's the first one I pick up the phone to say, Ari. Ari. She wanted to be um, a doctor at some stage, and then she diverted. She wanted to be a lawyer. That was standard. We all knew Rile Wotloba lawyer. And then Hasnohola, she went opposite direction. She's in PR. I never stood in her way because um, nearly unairata. Unairata and uh, nabala, and she, she liked writing. You have the whole world to support you, but at the end of the day, everything still falls on you. Um, so your, your drive, your ambition, your um, successes, your failures, all of it is your responsibility. I'm very proud of her achievement. I'm very proud of the tenacity that she has. Um, not giving up. 2004 or March. Because I'm going to Yeah, and then things happened. Oh. <laughs> One of my friends in the house is Gimuti Norman. As Joe and Amo Nalumuntulu, Saluta Vidam, like Gumna and Jay. Then that's when I call Piggies in Togash. No, you guys are Muslim. He he was the first one I told when I when when I eventually said I'm doing it and he said he supported me, he said go for it. She's a hard worker, like oh because I'm here la la one as the penny V. I like that he knew what it was going to be difficult because we were going from two salaries to one, because I had when I started it was like zero. <laughs> Looking at him towards Zenzayo, and he, 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 he demand their services, so I can, like I can tell with Norman. Ukulile now, and the business now Ukulile plan. I have a lot of ideas about where I want to take PR Powerhouse. Um, I think that we've spent the last five years working hard to just build up our reputation so that people know who we are and what we do. And I think now we have come to a point where we need to kind of lift off and go to, to, to the next height. No problem. Thank you. Uh -huh. It is amazing to hear how Lebu has managed to persist, even when life presented her with challenges. Jenga man, your studio said to talk to Sana no Pips, Umjela Guting Gabayenum, Unama Pamas, Uktata PR Powerhouse, Aikulis, Aitata, I beg her to the next level. Morning. I'm so excited. I've just arrived at Making Moves. I'm looking forward to chatting with Pepsi and the coach. Don't know what to expect, but I'm looking forward to it. With 10 years' experience in PR and marketing, a thousand rand in her bank account, a laptop and a 3G card, Lebo set out to start her own business in 2011. Five years later, I'm interested to know how the business has fared and what's the next move for her company. Lebo, welcome to Making Moves. Hi, Pepsi. How are you doing? Good, good. Good, good. Good, Take a seat. Thank you. So, Lonmin is one of your clients. <coughs> How's that? We worked with Lonmin during one of their most difficult times. Um, but the initiative that we worked with them on was more internal than external. So a lot of the work that we did for them was seen more internally than would have seen in, in media. Um, and it was about their share scheme offer, which was a way to try and com um, compensate um, the staff and also just make them feel like they have ownership of the business. Yeah. So my next question is slightly controversial. Mm -hmm. It has something to do with your first client. You handled that client for your employer, mm -hmm. and then when you left, 
they were the first client that you signed up. I think there'll always be some sort of controversy around those sort of things. Um, but the contract with the previous agency that I was with had ended. Um, the agents was just doing ad hoc work here and there. Um, and I went to see the clients and I told them that I was leaving to start my own business and they said, we're coming with you. And I think that's the strength of relationships. When people, people work with people, you know, it's people don't work with companies. And I think that's where it emanated from. It obviously upset my previous employer. We had a little bit of a legal um, fight, layers, lawyers' letters going up and down, but eventually we managed to to resolve it. I mean, you were walking a, a tight It's a very it tight very, line. Very it's tight a very tight line because you also, there's um, constraints, agreements, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That which it's, yeah, it's, it's but tricky. But you worked around But it. we worked around Now, it. you're having the same issue now where you're saying, okay, it's relationships mm -hmm. and people deal with people yeah. as opposed to companies. Mm -hmm. And now you're having a problem. Your business is at a place where you want to grow it but you're finding that clients want to see you yes. all the time. I think in the last year, I've been trying to move the clients away from buying into label to buying into the business itself. Um, it's, not, it's, not the, it's not easy to do with existing clients, but much easier to deal with, with the newer ones because I'm bringing my team more into the meetings, I'm letting them lead, and, and I'm staying a bit more in the background. Um, and, but whilst also trying to just make sure that I've got those relationships with the clients as well, because I think it's pretty, it's very risky to not have a stronghold on, on, on relationships. If you don't own the client If you don't own the client relationship. Okay, yeah. and what are some of the other challenges involved with running the business right now? I am a communicator, more a communicator than a business person, and that's, in the beginning of the business I had issues with running the business and running the PR and the communications, the, the actual work for the clients. And I've, in the last couple of years, tried to progress and move away from doing the actual PR work to running the business, because you can't do both. Um, I get a kick out of new business. So if I have meet new people, present new concepts, and actually get to a point of signing that deal, I just get a much higher high, if, if I can call it that, from, from the day-to-day stuff. Okay, who's yeah. going to focus on the nuts and bolts? With the nut, I oversee the nuts and bolts, but I've got a support structure um, that looks into those. So we've got an accountant, we've got a company that assists us with all the HR issues, so new staff contracts, leave, um, all of those, the stuff that falls under HR so and happens. So you want out of the implementation of I the want work to move out of the implementation the, and do the, more the growing. the growing. What happened the last time you took your eye off the ball with the finances? Um, I had an accountant that I worked with and I just left it to him to do it. Um, and until I got a call from SAS to say, Miss, you are some money. Um, and it was, a, it was a very tough position to be in. Um, it was nerve-wracking. Um, but I managed to um, find another <laughs> accountant that could help me out of the situation. We made arrangements with SAS so that I could make payments in, in installments type of, um, of setup. Um, but I'm now into my books. I know what's coming in, I know what's going out, I know when we need to pay VAT. So I know all of the, the big end of finances better than I did then. So what's next? Where's, where's the growth for the business? Um, we're not strong in digital and social, and I think that's where the world is moving. Um, but we are in the process at the moment of realigning the business, but also looking at the kind of clients that we work with. It's engineering firms and mining companies. And what we want to do is integrate what we already do for them with digital so that they don't see digital as a separate offering, which they currently do at the moment. And it's something they forget or do when they remember. And I think because they are not there yet, there's an opportunity for us to just take them on the journey. Um, into into the digital Oh, that's sphere. a great opportunity. If you don't do it, somebody else will. Definitely. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I think Thank you've you, been Pepsi. through a lot over the years. Yeah. But you've stuck with it. You've learned the lessons. You're growing Tough steadily. <laughs> yeah. uh, and here you are. Yeah. And uh, I wish you, you know, all the best. And, I, and I'm sure you'll grow from strength to strength. Thank you so much. Okay.
Lebo is a smart entrepreneur who's passionate about her business. But like the rest of us, she could do with some business advice or at least a sounding board to help her improve her operations. I'm now sending her to a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Tuli Magubani to discuss ways to improve her business. It was good. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. The nerves were there, but he's, he's a good interviewer, so they come down very quickly. I mean, there's nothing worse taking a concept to a client, you present it to them, you leave them with your presentation, they tell you we don't have budget or we can't do it in this particular fund. And then three months down the line, they're, doing, there. yes, they're yeah. doing your event. What are you passionate about, uh, you know, when it comes to the business? For the longest time, it's been the execution, and I think it's from, like I said, the passion of being in the industry. But as I grow as a business owner, I'm realizing more the importance of new business development. So I'm focusing a lot of my energy on, on that side of the business. Okay. Yeah. And of course, with communication, you can't run away from social media, from digital. How are you in that space? Are you comfortable in that space? How's the business? Uh, finding itself in that particular space at the moment? We have very industrial clients who haven't really moved into the, the social media space or the digital space. So for me, there's an opportunity for us to mine that little space and introduce them to digital. She can really get into the more digital and online and social media aspects of uh, their clients' business and helping them to communicate that way. I think that's where the potential lies. Our clients are very industrial um, and haven't really moved into the digital space. Looking at the digital space to be the next kind of growth stage um, for the business to take the clients into. Um, but I don't think that the business is fully there to be able to offer um, that service. Well, one of the ways that you can go about it is uh, either hiring freelancers mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that can come on board on a project-to-project -project basis. And if you have a retainer, then it helps. You keep them a bit longer. <laughs> sure. But if it's only for a certain period of time, you've got someone working on a particular client for that time. Mm. Or you could work out an alliance or a strategic uh, partnership yeah. with another business that's already strong in that area. Yeah. Creating alliances or looking at freelancers, I think it'll be best to start small, working with freelancers and then see how that will grow and whether it's something that we want to bring in-house or whether it's something that we want to partner with another organization on. What I would like to do or what we'd like to do as a business is to create our own concept. So we, like you're saying, there's so much that's happening out there. There's tendering, there's... Um, new business requests that are happening that when you go to those type of briefings there are so many of you mm. that you're not quite sure what your chances of, of getting the business are so we our, our idea on moving into events is to create our own concepts okay. that we then sell to to clients i think there's and the, would you yeah. patent those concepts because, I mean, there's nothing worse taking a concept to a client, you present it to them, you leave them with your presentation, they tell you we don't have budget or we can't do it in this particular and then, and then three months down the line, they're, doing, there. yes, they're yeah. doing your event. That's a good thought. I hadn't thought that far, so mm. yes, that's... that. Well, we're looking at custom events and um, concept type of events, so we're not going to go out there and look for events that are already existing. We're going to look at creating our own. Um, it's an interesting space. I'm very excited about it and to see how far it goes. These first five years were about finding our feet. And it's not, when you're starting from zero base, it's not very easy to get through the first five years. So we're very excited about having gone through these. I think that we've earned our stripes and the next five years are about growth. The saying, dynamite comes in small packages, speaks directly to our next entrepreneur. Uwale kuroti kwenye nani? Ona mnyaga u 26 years yenagi. Homu nyaga baso ma business. Aba bangi nani yego na nyaga lumka kalo. Jenga manje kwenye nyaga siga satu mvagashela iwo visin la kila paya na irvonya esentin. Uwasga bantu guti yo kila media yonage iseben zaganja. Hi, this is Allegro Dinkwenyani, founder and CEO of Ogela Media. 
We are a PR and marketing agency offering PR and communication services to celebrity and corporate clients. For more information, find us on www.orgelamedia.com or you can email us on info at orgelamedia.com. And then I chose Allegro, and when I turned that around, it was Okela. And I thought, okay, whatever I'm going to do in the future, get play Okela. Okela. And I ran with that. Company <laughs> how you've got background in yeah, journalism mm. and then somewhere somehow you decide I how about how about journalist you don't see yourself you know in the newsroom space how about how he talk to me about that journey um, I learned a lot of um, businessmen and women. My mother herself um, was an entrepreneur, even today, but she's a professional teacher. So I think growing up, I've always known that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and you know have a business of my own. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I've always known, even when I went on to, you know, study um, journalism go the University of Johannesburg after mm. I matriculated um, go uh, at um, uh, High School, I knew that media was my space. And um, the name of my company, I came up with it in high school already. You know, um, I was inspired by, by Oprah, Harpo Studios. Yeah. And I thought, hey, one of my names must read nicely backwards. Yeah. Uh, so my pity name is Mohao, and Mohao made absolutely no sense. Yes. I couldn't even read it. And then I chose Allegro, and when I turned that around, it was Okela. And I thought, okay, whatever I'm going to do in the future, keep play Okela. Okela. And I ran with that. It happened in third year. We were doing a module on online journalism. And we were asked to do a mock-up blog, yeah. fake blog, created, make sure that, you know, you come top of the class. And the overachiever, Allegro, always wanting to beat everybody in the mm -hmm. class. I did my best, and my lecturer, uh, Miss Nadia van der Merwe, loved it so much. Um, and Peter, after the class, I know, you know what? I really loved reading this fake blog. I yeah. think that you have something going on. How about you continue with this hobby? And the, the blogging space was started, it was new, you know, in SA, in Africa, the digital space was really starting to pick up. Said so you could end up making some good money from this, even as a hobby. So I took it seriously, and how I launched my company was initially with a blog, yes. my entertainment blog, Okela Entertainment. And then everything else just... Everything else is good. came together. Okay, so we are here at the coffee shop, yeah? Yeah. Uh, which is the coffee shop downstairs from where the offices mm -hmm. are. Right over there, I'll show you. Break it down the services I mean, from the online entertainment blog, Ogela Online, um, that I started in 2011, we yeah. generate revenue there from advertising. Um, so we keep it consistent, cover the events that we cover, the, the celebrity news that we do, and fashion and so on. And brands come on board and they sponsor and partner with us. So that's how we make money from that side. And then there's um, Ogela PR, which is why I actually moved here. Otherwise, we would have continued to work from coffee shops and yes. home. And then we have Orgela Communications, the PR and marketing agency, where we provide um, PR and marketing services, um, also focusing on social media management, the digital space as a whole. Um, we offer different strategies and campaigns for corporate and celebrity clients. Mm -hmm. And which is why we're in this space, really, because a lot of them want to come and meet you in a boardroom, yeah. and we go to their offices, those that prefer that we meet them there. I started with Orgela um, Media in 2012. Yeah, 2012, I was still living in Durban. And I started off volunteering for um, the website Orgela Online as a features writer. And then last year, I started working permanently for Orgela Communications. I started off as an intern and then worked my way up now as senior account exec. We basically have to get publicity for our clients. 
get them interviews, be it media, print or online um, publications. So most of the time we are on the phone. She's super fun, she's super cool, she's encouraging. You always need to be on your A-level because she's, she's phenomenal. The woman behind Ogela Communications and Ogela PR is someone who's been in my life from pretty much day one, from the beginning of my career, from the days of I Deserve, you know. What makes it very unique, you know, from all the other companies is, number one, it's, it's owned by a very young women. But I think for me, the key thing is the hard work, man, you know. Um, they, they don't play around, you know what I'm saying? They really, they, they work until the early hours of the morning for their clients. And, that, and I think for me, as a client, that is one, the one element, you know, in their company that I, I, I appreciate the most. What sets you apart from other people out there? Balingo industry ngay o lingoyon. I think it's you putting your clients first because at the end of the day, I'm making money and I'm sustaining this business from my clients' pay. So if they are unhappy and they're only getting one or two interviews a month, there's a problem and I'm yeah. getting 10. There's definitely a problem, you know? Yeah. So I think that's the fine line that publicists need to know that let me not, you know, um, do too much, but also don't hold back on promoting the company. So would you take me on as a client? I would, are you serious enough though? What do you mean? That's my question. I am on making moves. I am all about making moves. I believe in your talent and I've seen your work. That much I can vouch for. Yeah. But so maybe sometimes you have a PA who's doing all of that. So hopefully you can back it up and put in the work and then we'll do the, our best. Don't worry, when I just drop the paperwork, I'll come back in one day and sign it. Got a contract. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> also, Not empty. Very fancy. Are you making money? <laughs> Yes, I am. How much I am. money are you making? Should I tell you how much yeah, money I'm making? I'm making enough to have travel budgets and, you know, own a couple of properties. So yeah. that's enough. To have done so many amazing things at such a young age, one cannot help but wonder where does Allegro draw her inspiration from? Sitatis katu toko sana na bantu aba maziga bantu. Ugu sichela ugu tige ele ntoka zile nai. Utandu la lente yenzayo. Futu enalo mtanda anao. Utatapi. Nugu tisifunu kwa azuti ene umuntu onjani. Umengeke pizinsin laki. Um, I was born in Mpopo, Kolebahomo, and then raised in Pretoria um, for all my life, I would say. You know, I went to primary school there, and then um, we moved back to uh, Bulukwane when my parents divorced at the age of 12. Allegro Ogodile Ile, a very hyper child. She was too much of a dreamer. You would see that. She would say stuff, and not like, yo, none mama would be looking at her like, Never gonna happen. I had a very fun upbringing. Like, my parents, my mom is more especially, is like one of those moms that's like, okay, you want a certain toy, you wanna go to the movies of the weekend, show me your grades. Mm, they don't, they don't, how, how only bright, they actually were with the number one. A little took the number one. So that's how she was. Very clever, very focused. become a lot of things growing up um, and I think it's because of how I, I grew up exposed to don't stick to just be a nurse or a teacher or whatever you know the world was my oyster it was like at one point I was so good at athletics winning medals I thought maybe I'm gonna be the next Marion Jones when she was in Sunnyside Primary School in Pretoria she used to be a runner she used to be a caster semenya fastest never meet us don't be you see she's still short and then that's where we thought, yeah, maybe she's going to be a runner. Not only potries. She still has, but I don't know. They coughed because of the heels. <laughs> Whatever. Ah, Allegro. I 
was competitive, ask anybody. I was like so competitive. I think I naturally am. Even when I did sport, you know, I, I did um, athletics, I did swimming, I did, I dabbled in netball, which I didn't like and I dropped it. Like I did everything that I wanted to do and I had choices. If I didn't like something, I've tried it and I move on. Whatever I excelled in, I stayed in that. And then um, later on when I was in high school, I left sports for more um, spoken word things. I would do debate, I did poetry, um, head girl. You know, then, yeah. I was that girl who went to a matric dance alone because I was just like, boys are just trouble. Um, we met um, at the, was it the media conference for the Trey Songs concert last year? And it's quite strange because we always knew each other off social media, but we had never actually sort of met and, you know. Um, and from there on, we just connected. She comes across as very level headed and to herself. She stays in her lane, she's not interested in anyone, but she's. She's got that power that's within her, that when she walks into a room, you will take note of her. She is extremely driven. I mean, this is a woman who has six, seven companies under her name. She works seven days a week. But even besides all of that, you know, that's or business and work. She's got a very caring heart. When you go through stuff, you get allegro as the younger one, be like, ah, no, I don't like pity parties. You get through it. She's a very prayerful woman. That's what I think it's making her what she is right now. I've been known to be impatient and I've spotted that, um, spotted that within myself. There's, I think it also comes from these deadlines I set for myself. But now because I'm an entrepreneur, I have to be more patient. Um, things don't happen overnight and um, I'm turning that into a strength now, you know. But I think that's one thing I identified from a very young age that I want things to happen now and they're not gonna happen now. I, I, I might think I'm ready, but then I'm not. So be more patient, relax and work at your own pace. And that's what I've been able to teach myself. Kachabilisa kubona abantu abasha benza imsebenzi emihle kezimpilo zabo kodwa ke kuningi okwenzakalayo lapha yana eOgelamid omunye umuntu angazibuza ukuthi ingabe uAlegro akathathanga na umsebenzi omningi kakhulu njengamanje sesitudio sethu uxoxisana nopeps ngokuthi business lakhe lisebenza kanjani Just arrived here at the Making Move Studios um I have an interview with Pepsi, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm excited, hopefully no trick questions. And um, I'm just excited that they're profiling my business and it's a great opportunity. So yeah, can't wait. Not many of us can confidently say that we've never submitted a CV in our lives. The lady I'm about to meet says she's never done it. She's achieved a lot at a very young age and she's here to tell me what's next for her business. Allegra. Welcome to Making Moves. Thank you for having me, Pepsi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic. Take a seat. Thank you. So, this Ogela Media, mm -hmm. Ogela Real Estate, Ogela Eats, Ogela Foundation, <laughs> Ogela Entertainment, Ogela yes. Events, mm. uh, what do you do? We do um, a number of things, like you just you know, mentioned. I have a media company, um, it's called Ogela Media, um, and we have eight entities underneath Ogela. Um, and the first one is Ogela Entertainment, which I launched in 2011, um, while I was in my third year at Varsity, about to graduate from a BA journalism degree. And I just decided that I'm gonna be self-employed, and um, I did a module on online journalism, so that for me was something I was very passionate about. And when I found out that I could actually make money out of this blogging thing, I thought, well, I'm going to run with it. I'm battling to take you seriously. <laughs> All these companies, like, are you actually yeah. making money? Well, I mean, I've hired eight people so far, mm -hmm. and it's going well for, you know, a young black entrepreneur. I'm just 26, and I'm so far so good, and I'm happy. I think we, we're good at eight. You know, that was always my dream, and then now it's just really managing and making sure that every entity is actually flourishing. You know, yeah. I'm still not convinced. <laughs> Why aren't you who, convinced? Who are some of your clients? Um, well, we deal with celebrity clients and corporate clients. Some of our corporate clients include um, Avon South Africa, uh, Heineken, we've done some work with Vodacom. Um, and then we also have on the celebrity side, um, Donald, who's one of our um, long-standing clients, who's been with us for quite some time. We've got our news anchor, Tabile Nwadu, we've got Mpoma Boy, we've got uh, so many other, you know, clients. And there's also guys um, in, in uh, Nigeria, we've 
got Young Six, he's a rapper. Um, we've done some stuff for Whiskey when he comes to South Africa. He's one of our Nigerian um, uh, clients. And um, yeah, so also it's not empty. Also, very fancy. Are you <laughs> money? Yes, I am. How much I am. money are you making? Should I tell you how much yeah, money I'm making? Time. I'm making enough to have travel budgets and, you know, own a couple of properties. So yeah. that's enough. So which of these entities is making money? Right now, Ogela Properties is definitely making, you know, a lot of money um, from, you know, the investment side and managing a couple of other properties for different companies. We do that. And then the PR and marketing agency, not on the celebrities um, side, but more on the corporate side. I mean, they have a lot more budget. They know what they want and stress-free, really, you know. Um, so those two uh, entities are really doing well. Also, the blog is doing well. We do have, um, you know, advertising from month to month. Sometimes you can make, like, 80 to 100k in advertising a month you know it depends what our numbers are the readership as it grows and so on and then the other five yeah you haven't actually built a significant business mm. out of any one of them okay well i beg to differ okay. on that yeah. um all um eight entities actually it's all it's seven because the other one is an eight um npo it's a okela helping hands it's a charity foundation so we don't make any money you know that was launched in 2011. uh Ogela events we launched uh, this year in may um and the reason we did that is that we found that a lot of our clients on the pr side when we work with them they would you know whether it's a celebrity or corporate at some point they want to have an event um and then we would have to out source a lot of the services you know getting them you know hiring decor venues MCs and so on and I thought you know what I really want to keep everything in-house so I'm gonna you know um, launch Ogela events and when we have clients that want certain events whether it's Avon wanting to do a media launch and invite you know um, a couple of the media to launch a new product we then organize that in-house we're not having to go out and outsource anymore and we've partnered with a company called lounge around they're based in Midrand they basically have anything like you want in terms of furniture. Through that, we are able to offer our clients all of those services. Having a shop in-house that does events for your existing PR and communications clients mm -hmm. is not an events business. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just an in-house capability. I beg to differ once again. Okay. Yeah, because you we don't just to do. Because we so. don't just do for like our current <laughs> clients. Like other guys come from outside and they want you know to plan an event and so on, and we do that for them. They're not okay, our clients on PR. Of, hundreds you know. of event companies so, in Johannesburg, and we're one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not convinced. Okay. <laughs> maybe but I should plan an event for you. Yeah, maybe but you then should. you'll be convinced. Yeah, you should. I'm not saying you can't yeah. do events. Yeah. I think one of your challenges is you can do a lot of things mm -hmm. and you know how to do a lot of things because mm -hmm. you're clearly very talented. The issue is you can't do all of them mm -hmm. um, if you want to do a handful of things really, really well. You know, you're right because you can't do everything in Excel with all of, you know, you can't have 10 companies and all of them will flourish at the same time. Yeah. There is something I know that my where my strengths are, and then I launch companies and I get the right people to then you know run with that. So I mean, it, you can even do twelve companies if you want yeah. to, you know, do I so disagree. many. I disagree. And let's you agree. Know? I'm like at least ten years you older know? than you, wiser. Okay. Um, <laughs> you may disagree on strategy. So yeah. I'm going to hand you over to a business coach, maybe somebody else that you can engage yeah. uh, further about your business. And I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but. Um, I don't know. I want to prove you wrong. Okay, best of there luck. There you go, thank okay. you. So Allegra and I can agree to disagree. She has the exuberance of youth. I've got the, ex what, the, the benefit of experience and the wealth and wisdom of age. But we've heard her ambitions and where she wants to take her business. I'm handing her over to one of our business coaches to advise her on ways to help her reach her dreams. Um, the interview with Pepsi was cool. Um, yeah, like we said, we'll beg to differ on a number of things. But um, yeah, a few tips here and there that he's sort of like hinted at me. And um, I loved it. I enjoyed it. You know, um, hopefully the viewers will also love it. <laughs> Okay, let me understand this because mm. I think that's where I want to understand how you make money and make sure that all these eight entities are self-sustainable. Yes. Because it will be, uh, for me, if ever you are running into them and they still, one takes money from another so that one survives, mm. I just want to know, how do you divide, if it's 100%, which one do you give most of your time and which one is more of your milk cow? 
Um, I would say right now I'm giving more of my time to the PR and marketing agency. I would say about 40% goes to Ogela Communications. Um, and then there's also the entertainment blog, which is how I started the overall, you know, the company itself. So maybe 30% there. And then, you know, the rest are seeing 10, 5% of my time around. So, um, but mainly right now the focus is the PR and marketing agency and the entertainment blog. Okay, my advice, uh, honestly, on when it comes to all these wonderful things that you're doing, mm would be go back and uh, really go look deeper into which company is bringing mostly the high profits mm -hmm. and which ones you should be giving more of your time to. Because I'm worried that even the NGO element to it that you're running in terms of charity work, that you could be uh, giving it much attention. I mm -hmm. am an entrepreneur. I know when we feel good, we do want to do more yeah. and we spend True. most of our time into. because. One thing that makes us even get sick as entrepreneurs is lack of focus. I've seen it with many other entrepreneurs. Whenever they find a new concept, it pops up tomorrow, they just want to go and ride with it. Then they don't give any concept attention that it deserves. So I'm worried about her uh, running her time too thin and not being productive. I have been trying to manage my time quite well, you know. I have to oversee all companies um, and have my, you know, eye in almost every company entity, you know. So um, for her to just say, okay, for now, start with focusing on the ones that are actually not making the most money, but you're seeing the profits, you know, because you could be putting all your time and energy in something that is not yielding the results that you want at the end of the day. And then also also, um, for me as a young entrepreneur, I faced, you know, a lot of, um, you know, doors being shut in my face because I'm too inexperienced to run a media company. So when you're going out and looking for funding, people are already looking at my age, the fact that I've never worked for anybody in my life, and they're just like, are we really going to trust you with this money? You know, so those have been, for now, the, the two challenges that I've been facing, which is why um, all my companies have been self-funded except for Ogela Properties, which my mother has helped me with. So, yeah, I think that and just, I don't know, maybe I should lie about my age. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, not. I yeah. think your work that you've done for the past five years of yeah. being in business should speak volume for you. Mm. So don't be shy to ask those uh, clients to endorse you mm. or to even use some of the experience and share it with the world. Yeah. Anyhow, I do believe being here at Making Moves is the reason why you, uh, we are here as mentors to help you yeah. navigate through and I uh, am so much happy to be sitting with you and going beyond this uh, mm. in advising and seeing how we can help you with those challenges. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much for your time. Thank you. And we wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think she is a, an amazing woman, full of energy, the zeal. I mean, she's in the right space for her character. I think that's why she will be able to reach out and be able to do what she does excellently. My overall making moves experience has been really eye-opening. I actually got some pointers even from my coach, who I was speaking to, um, Puseleto, about you know the business and what I could improve on. Because we all know as entrepreneurs, we're not perfect. You know, even if you're a successful entrepreneur, there's always something you can improve on so I'm very grateful for the opportunity.